Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would just like to discuss some uh, concepts regarding the cost and input efficiencies within microeconomics. So this section relates to the marginal output, total output and average output of a firm. So let's look at the first concept, fixed versus variable inputs. Now, you need to know the definition of an input. An input is used by a business if they want to, is used by a business if they want to produce something. Okay, so labor is an input, a plant is an input, or a factory is an input, a building is an input. All of these are inputs used in the production process. Now, normally we get two types of inputs, fixed and variable. The fixed one is the one which doesn't change over the short run. Let's say like a, a factory that you hire to produce in, you're uh, normally involved in that factory in a contract for more for a long period of time. But then a variable input is something like labor which you can easily replace uh, in the short run. So that's the variable inputs. Okay, so both these variable and fixed inputs relate to the production function. The production function is just a combination of using different relationships between quantities of input and maximum physical output. So it's all about how much inputs you put into the production process and what is the output you're gonna get out of your production process. So again, very important to relate this to a firm. Remember the previous sections we focused on consumer behavior. Now we're looking at in terms of the firm, what is their, uh, their importance in terms of inputs and outputs. Okay, so let's like look at a simple table. Firstly, you have the number of workers and then the total output in the second column. As you can see, very interesting, and if you increase the number of workers, you increase the total output. So this is fairly sim simple. Uh, you should know this from looking at a basic firm. If you add more labor to a firm, you will get more output. And that's what we're gonna study today. We're gonna look at, if I add more labor, what is my output gonna, how is my output gonna change? And how's the efficiency gonna change of the output, okay? And this is very important. So let's look at a following table just before we go to marginal average output, which are two important concepts here to understand. If I add more workers, as you can see, if I go from one worker to two workers, I increase my total output from 20 to 34, and I increase it to three workers, I increase my total output from 34 to 49. As you can see, you increase, increase, up until a certain point. Can you see at labor six, you have 76 output, but if you add another labor to this equation or to this firm, your average output, your total output still remains 76. This is a concept, concept you need to understand. And I want to use an example here before I start with anything, and this example should guide you through this, okay? So let's take a restaurant. So you, you're a firm and you've just opened a restaurant, let's say in Johannesburg. It's a nice and busy uh, place, so you get a lot of people wanting to come and eat at your restaurant. Let's say you employ one cook, okay? So you employ one person to cook for you. Now, given that there is, let's say, 100 tables in a restaurant, this one cook can't handle all the pressure, all the cooking within the restaurant. So what do you do? You employ one more person, and thus the output of food becomes very, uh, becomes more. Why? Because as you increase your labor, more people can now work in the kitchen, and more people, people can produce food, thus your food output increases that you can serve in the restaurant. Okay. So this happens for a small restaurant, and they increase labor, and they get more cooks, and they get more people working in the kitchen, up until a certain point where the efficiency will start to drop if you add more labor to this confined space. Okay. And let's say I employ 100 people working in the kitchen, then my total output will actually start to decrease. So that's the lifespan and I order time cycle I want you to understand here that we're working with. We start off with a young firm that can employ more and more people and increase its efficiency up until a certain point. After that point, it can still increase and add more labor, which will still increase output, but at a diminishing rate, okay? And that's the concept of diminishing rate. So you need to understand that, and then from that point onwards, you will increase up your labor even more and more and more and get more output at a diminishing rate, but then it will, you will hit a maximum point and if you increase your labor even after this point, then your total output will start to decrease because like the kitchen example, people won't be able to even move in the kitchen and thus output will decrease. So use that kitchen example to understand this and to relate this work to a firm and the total output curve, which I will show you now. So let's look at the total output curve. So this is, the total output curve is normally separated into three sections. The first section is the increasing trend path. 
okay, up until this point. This is the increasing trend part. This is for a small firm at time in which if you add more labor, there's going to be a tremendous increase in your number of outputs. Up until a certain point where your total output curve or this curve is at its maximum in its increasing rate, after which it will be decreasing at an increasing rate, diminishing, okay, meaning increasing at a decreasing rate. Up until this point, this is the concave area, and then from this point onwards we have a third curve which shows a decreasing trend. So you can see there's three, three curves within this one total output curve. The first one is the increasing uh, uh, exponential trend, then we have a concave curve, and then we have a decreasing curve. Okay. So this is very important to relate to this because it it's almost shows you the, the cycle within a firm in terms of starting, let's say, at zero labor, and then as they add number of workers, the total output changes but in different ways. Okay. As you add more labor, it changes in different ways. So let's look at the two different types of output. The first one is the uh, total output, that's the main one. But let's look at the two different types of output that measure the efficiencies. Firstly, it's the marginal output efficiencies and then the uh, average output efficiency. So the average output efficiency, easy to calculate, you take the total output divided by the unit of variable input, and this is just an output to input ratio. So what am I gonna get out given I put this in? What am I output gonna be given I put this labor in? And that is a very uh, strong measure for your efficiency. And then we have the marginal output, which is a change in output over the change in input. So as you can see, there's not a lot of differences between the average and marginal output formulas. The only difference is the marginal output measures the change in output to input, where the average output is just the total output divided by the total input. Okay. So these two should uh, move in similar directions, given they are essentially the same formulas, just the marginal output measures change, while the average output uses the total values. So let's look at this diagram on top, of this table. This explains it very nicely. So as you can see, we have the number of workers, the total output, and then average output and marginal output. Very important to note is that marginal output will always increase faster than average output up until a point where average and marginal output reaches its maximum. As you can see here, average output increases from 10 to 12 on the top, and then marginal output increases to 14. And then average output increases from 12 to 14, and marginal output increases from 14 to 15. And as you can see, um, this happens, and then you reach a maximum point of four workers where your average output and marginal output is equalized. This is where your average output will be at its maximum, but marginal output will actually be at its maximum before it. And that's very important to note is that average output will be at its maximum after maximum uh, output has been reached for a marginal output. So let's look at that from a graph point of view, and then you'll understand it uh, a lot better. Okay. So this bottom graph just shows you that the marginal output will increase at a faster rate than the average output up until the maximum point is reached, after which it will decrease at a faster rate than the average output. Okay? And this is simple, why? Because it relates to the fact that marginal output is just a change in average output. And we all know the change in the variable significant, is significantly more volatile than just a normal total variable. Okay, so let's look at how do we derive the marginal, um, the average output curve. So let's look at how do we derive the, where's the maximum point on the average output curve. So we take the total output curve and then we draw, we draw straight linear lines from certain points. So you start at point zero, and we draw first one to point A, which shows you different combinations of total output and inputs, and then we draw another one on point H, which shows you different output given a certain amount of input. And where is your maximum output, or average output? It's where your slope line, or your ray, which is the linear line, process your total output curves, the highest possible. Remember that in difference curves, the same concept here, where your slope of your ray, this line, crosses your highest possible total output curve. So that is where its tangent is at point H, 
and thus point H represents your highest average output in this model. Okay, so look at that and remember that we use the rays to determine what is the slope of the line because it's easier to determine the slope of the line given a linear line and thus we use these linear lines to determine the point on the line and thus we can actually determine what is the point, the highest maximum point of average output. So let's look at how we determine the highest maximum uh, point of marginal output on a total output line. So again, remember the three different graphs we have. We first have the increasing trend one, then we have a concave one, and then we have a decreasing total output line. So there's three different uh, phases within a total output curve. Or curve. So let's take the marginal output one. Now the marginal output says that if I increase my units of uh, inputs, then I will get a certain amount of outputs out of that. And that's the marginal. So what's the marginal output I can get for adding each one more uh, number of units? So the highest point of your marginal output will be where your curve reaches its maximum increasing trend. Okay. So at point P, your, your marginal output will be at its maximum. Okay. Because this is the highest point in which one more unit of labor will add the most to your business. After you've increased the number of units after that, or the number of labor after that, yes, they will still increase your total output, but at a decreasing rate. If you go back to this graph, this figure, let's look at marginal output. You go from 14, is that the highest marginal output? No. 15? Yes, 15 is the marginal highest output. So this is your maximum output. Even if you add one more laborer, so you have three laborers, even if you add a fourth laborer, you will still add 13 products to your company, produce 13 products. But it's not as efficient, the most uh, marginal efficiency in terms of the 15. That was the point in which the worker you added delivered the most increase in output. Okay? After that, you can add more workers, but it will happen at a diminishing rate your total output will increase. And that's a concept we talk about here. Yes, output still increases, but at a diminishing rate. So that's the concept that I explained here in terms of price P, and we can also calculate the slope of this line. How do we calculate the slope of this line? Now, it's difficult to calculate the slope of this total output uh, curve because it's not linear, but what we can do is to draw a slope ray between point R and point RI, and thus we can get a point where the slope intersects with this line, again being the highest possible marginal utility point, and thus we can calculate the slope of this line, which is just the change in the output, or just, just the change in the uh, output and input variables. So again, if you calculate the slope of a, a linear line, you know it's a change in the output given it, or the change in the two variable on the axis, and thus the marginal output is also the same formula with the change in output over the change in inputs. Okay. So, that is the total output curve and the marginal output curve and the average output curve. Let's put all three of them together now into one diagram. Okay. So we first have our total output curve, then we have our marginal output curve down here, and our average output curve. Okay. Everything together now. Again, let's just recap. You're a firm, you start off here, a restaurant. You employ people in your restaurant. As you employ more people, then the output increases, but at a certain rate, the output will increase. So in this first section, and this splits it nicely, this first line shows you the exponential, or the increasing trend, where if you add more labor, the total output increases significantly. Because just think about a restaurant, if you open a restaurant today and there's 100, 100 people in your restaurant wanting food, then if you add more labor, more food is going to be produced. Okay. So up until this point, R. At point R, your marginal utility is at its highest. Or your marginal, or marginal output is at its highest. Meaning at this point, if you add one more labor to your restaurant, yes, you will still produce more, but the point of maximum marginal output has been reached at point R. So everything beyond this is diminishing. That's why we call it concave. 
And as you can see, the slope, the slope of this line changes now to a concave section. Okay. That's why we studied the first a couple of graphs in the previous uh, work now, is where we looked at the different determinations of the slope of the marginal utility and then this uh, slope because it's two different slopes. Okay. That's why you need to use it, the rays or the linear lines to actually calculate the slopes. So, then you move to on this diminishing line to point S. At point S, your average output will be at its maximum. Okay, so average output will be at its maximum point S, and after this point, you can still add more labor, and you can still increase your output, but your average output has reached its maximum, and if you increase labor up until point T, point T is the maximum amount of labor you can add to still produce my output. If you add more workers after point T to your restaurant and it becomes too full and you can't walk even in the kitchen and your total output reduces. Again, this is just an example I'm using to explain it, but in the theory, it's all about if your total output reaches this maximum, if you add more units of inputs, then the total output will start to decrease. And also you can, as you can see, at point T, your marginal output will be zero, meaning the worker will not add anything anymore if they're, if they're added to the business. And in, at point R, you can see marginal output is at its maximum, so point R relates to point U, the marginal output is, is at its maximum, and then point B is where average output is at its maximum, where the marginal output and average output curve crosses each other, okay? Like we discussed earlier. So again, this is just exactly what I've explained now. So you can please go and look at this and just understand the concepts here. Okay, so just lastly to finish off, what if there's a te technological improvement? So this, this is one of the areas which we study in microeconomics, especially when we look at it from a firm side or a firm's perspective. Technolog technological improvements have a major impact on a uh, firm and how does this relate to your total output curve and your inputs and your outputs? So let's look at the same total output curve and let's look at what is the impact of technology changes within a total output curve. So first off, there's two different ways in which the total output curve will change. Either you can decide the following. So the first one, you decide to keep your inputs constant. So let's, again, I'm going to use an example here. Let's say I'm running a restaurant still, I have all these cooks in my kitchen, but now I get a new machine that makes burgers faster than people. So I get this new machine in and I start producing more and more burgers. What can I do? First thing I can do, I can keep my cooks producing burgers and then I can use my machine to make more burgers and thus increase my total output while keeping my input, my labor constant. That's the first thing I can do, and that's good for a firm that can do that, okay? That, that will increase their profits. Or they can decide, okay, let's replace the machine, or let's replace our existing labor or our units of inputs with the machine that produces the burgers, and thus reduces the input, but keeps output constant. Can you see here? This is the one where you actually reduce your total output curve because you, you keep total output constant, but you actually reduce the number of inputs. Okay. Both these situations will lead to the firm earning more profit. Why? Because any technological improvement leads to an expansion of production and thus more profit. It's just the firm's choice now to decide whether they want to increase total output while keeping their inputs constant or they can decide to keep total output constant and reduce the cost by reducing the inputs. Okay. So either increase total output which increases revenue or reduce the cost, which also increases revenue. That's the two ways they can use the technological improvements. Okay, so thank you very much. Just to recap, please go and focus on the concept of marginal output, average output, and total output. Remember the different phases within this line, the different phases within these lines, the different slopes. This is a different slope than this one and in this one. So these are the different phases within this line and that all relates to the first one being the pathway to marginal utility, maximum marginal utility, then the R to S to average, maximum average utility, or sorry, output, not utility, and then from S to T, and then from T, you actually go down 
on your total output curve, and which if you increase your labor even more, your units even more, uh, then your total output will actually start to decrease. So focus on marginal output, focus on average output, and focus on total output, and relate the three together and know where they are on a graph and how they can reach its maximum point and how their average output and total output relate in terms of the fact that marginal output increases at a faster rate than average output because the formulas are similar, but the only difference is the marginal output uses a change in total output over input, where the average output is just the total um, output over total input. And thus the average output or the marginal output increases at a faster rate, but in, at a certain, at, until a certain point after which it will start to decrease again even at a faster rate, because it uses a change in the variables and not the total variables. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know. Enjoy the rest of your day.